because uh, response codes, An what the of circuit is HTTP bad, right? what's request. success, what's failure, what's oh, error. Talk about some tools to kind of uh, make your own requests and kind of dissect, uh, you know, all the requests out there. And then lastly, uh, we'll do closing, Q&A, things like that. Um, so, let's get started. So, so why HTTP, right? Why this topic? Um, I work in the managed hosting field. And what that means is that, you know, we have our DCs, stock full of servers, and customers come to us and they put their website on there, right? The websites, their applications, anything like that. Uh, so that means it could be anything from a uh, basic lab stack, right? Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, uh, or any version of that stack. Or it could be a very customized job application, job application they wrote 10 years ago and haven't touched since. Uh, so what that does provides a lot of, uh, we'll say, opportunities, right, to troubleshoot a lot of unique and different things. Um, and what that, why I bring that up is because that, what that makes us do is have to really understand the underlying protocols, right? Because all those applications, all of those services, right, the underlying protocols, all that is still an HTTP request. You brought the slides up today, you made an HTTP request, right? You pull down files from a server. So, um, so, uh, Doing that, my, my role there, my role of my current job is a lot of training and mentoring. And usually I get, I find myself getting a lot of escalation saying, hey, I'm having these problems. And what I found out was that uh, it really came down to an understanding of what the error codes were or what the response codes were and understanding how the communication actually happened and worked. So, um, I decided to like kind of start to dig into and say, hey, let's get really, really back to basics on this, right? I was curious about asking why. How does this work? Why does this work, right? Um, and so, uh, taking text down that type of path, saying let's look down, it's like very, very basics, right? Uh, let's tell it to a server, let's start to actually communicate through the protocol the way a server would. So that's kind of the genesis of the presentation, right? So, um, actually, this slide doesn't make any sense anymore. There was a SpongeBob joke that I took out. Uh, so we'll, we'll go on, right? Um, that got more laughs than the actual SpongeBob joke, so. <laughs> so, <laughs> moving on. Um, <laughs> what is HTTP, right? Um, and it's basically stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Uh, I, I think uh, transfer and protocol pretty much are self explanatory, right? Uh, protocol being the way that, in this case, a client and a server will communicate with each other. Uh, transfer, right? Moving those things. So the one sitting there is hypertext, kind of what I want to talk about a little more. Um, hypertext is simply a, a, a medium or a document, right, that has links to another document, right, or another, uh, another document, which also has links to probably another document, right? It's a way to navigate through uh, various uh, documents through what's called hyperlinks, right? Uh, so we go through all that stuff, right, and you find yourself um, going down with, you know, more another document, another document, another document, <laughs> and then you have something like that happening, right? And you just close them all, reopen it, Firefox opens them all the again, and you're back to the same problem. So, uh, essentially, that, that's what hypertext is, right? It's, it's, it's bare minimum, it's a medium that has links to other documents, so forth, right? Okay, so a bit of history. I'm not a big history buff, but I think it's good to have at least some uh, kind of reference point to how long uh, HTTP has been around. Uh, if you guys pull up the slides, all of these link back to the actual RFCs. Uh, for those unfamiliar, RFC is a request for comments. It basically describes the way the protocol should be implemented, right? Uh, uh, key, uh, sorry. Uh, key point there should be implemented, right? Um, as we all know, there can be multiple inter interpretations of an RFC, of an implementation, right? Just think about the way we uh, render HTML in Firefox, Chrome, IE, right, back in the day. So, uh, starting off in 1996 with RFC 1945, uh, they find the first kind of protocol for HTTP 1.0. Uh, then in uh, 1999, we have 1.1 with various improvements. We'll talk about that in a few slides. Uh, in June of 2014, the, the actual protocol, or the RFC for HTTP 1.1 got broken down into all these other articles here. Uh, just be a bit more... Uh, Specialized, I'd say, right? So all those all those RFCs there end up deprecating what we see up there with uh, 2616. Okay, again, just a bit uh, of history. Those, those are hyperlinks there. You can connect. You can actually click and link to the RFC itself, 
be a bit more if you want to get really, really uh, down and dirty with it, right? Get uh, in the weeds with it. So, um, also, HTTP2, uh, this came out, the spec came out, or RFC came out in May of this year, May of 2015. So, there's that whole lot out there uh, to talk about. I just want to make note of it that there is an RFC for HTTP2. Uh, it's based off of the Speedy protocol from Google. Oh, I misspelled Google, awesome. Um, <laughs> you'll still go to Google, I bet you. Um, <laughs> and then they bought all the domains, like all of them, right? Three, four, five. Uh, so, yeah, oh well. So based on Speedy, uh, essentially it's a way to speed up uh, how HTTP handles those requests and transfers uh, data between client and server. I'm not going to say too much more than that, other than that it is out there. Uh, it just got its RFC, uh, interesting <coughs> stuff. So I think Nginx you can use it with Nginx. I'm not sure about Apache yet, uh, but I'm pretty sure Nginx you can use it with. So, um, all right. So coming back a little bit, kind of the, the the big ones, kind of the ones we see the most often, right? I, I chose to specifically kind of talk about HTTP 1.0 versus 1.1 in this case, because uh, we see the most often, right? At least want to give uh, when I go back and teach the text on the floor, I want to give them some background on 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 what was the improvements, right? So. A number of improvements, the three big ones I want to highlight here are um, the first one that requires a host header. Okay? Uh, every request for HTTP 1.1 requires a host header, and I'll talk about what that means uh, a bit further on. Essentially, it is the website I want from that, from that server. Okay? Uh, it allows for persistent connections. With HTTP 1.0, in the past, every connection was a new, uh, every request was a new connection. If I wanted a website or if I wanted a page, request. Uh, was the connection. If I wanted an image from that page, a new connection, right? So what does that mean? That means a lot of overhead, okay? Uh, so with 1.1, we get an improvement there. We can make multiple requests to the server without having to continually build up, build up and break down that, 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 that socket, that port, okay? And then lastly, implemented 100-level uh, informational status codes, uh, which we'll talk about again a bit further on, okay? Um, a bit more on HTTP itself. Uh, HTTP itself is stateless. Uh, so what does that mean? Uh, that means that every request should have enough information to complete that request regardless of any requests that come before it or after it. Right? So every request itself, you see this more about APIs, right? We have a, a request that makes a server do something or gets information from a server that you want. Um, so that being said, right, as we all know the web now, there's sessions that you can log in, you have memory, right? Uh, there is persistence in that, so how does that happen, right? Um, it happens through a number of ways. Uh, the first off being cookies, right? Uh, cookies being on the client side uh, or sessions on the server side. I make the point to note it here just because, uh, making more point that while we do have sessions, we do have persistence uh, within kind of a, accounts and all those things online, uh, that's not part of the protocol itself, that's implemented either application side or server side. Okay, so it's in addition to that. All right, so I'm kind of talking about HTTP in kind of a big general sense, okay? Um, let's talk about some of these methods, right? Uh, I'm, only, I'm only going to use some of the methods, kind of the ones we talk about the most often, uh, not necessarily all of them, right? Because we only have about 40 minutes or so. So, <coughs> the first one here. Aha. All right, first three uh, methods I want to talk about. Again, methods, you want also to hear them as verbs, okay? <coughs> or the actions. So the first one would be these safe methods. These methods are implemented in the sense that they are non-destructive, right? They're just informational getting things back from the server. Right? We get head, we have get, and we have options. We'll talk about those three first, okay? Uh, these messages, or these methods, are also item potent. So what does that mean? Um, kind of an interesting word up there. Uh, item potency is, is a, that's what I'm looking for. It's a trait, right, of a function that no matter how many times you run that function, you can expect back the same result multiple times. So what's an example of that? Um, an example of that might be if we're on a Linux system and, uh, well, actually we do have requests for index.html. We can make that same request over and over and over and expect to get the same result, right? An example of a non item put request or action would be like deleting a file. Right? I did the file once, I can't run that same function over and over and over and expect the same results, right? the same exact function. So that's the difference between something that's idempotent and something that's not. Okay? 
Um, so I'll make note of that there. Right? These, these requests are meant to be just that. The same request can get, expect to have the same response over and over and over. Okay? Um, example. Let's see if I can refresh this. I guess we got this. So, uh, these examples are not elaborate. They're not really that drawn out. But I have them up here because I want at least to have something back. You guys can go back and look at the slides later on. You have a reference point of what they look like, right? Also, have you ever, had, have you ever been typing and something over your shoulder? You type <laughs> immensely horribly, right? Now imagine when there's 40 people, 50 people looking at you typing. It doesn't go well. So, I did a video. Uh, so, what we'll do here is, cool. What we're going to see up here is an example of a GET request. What I'm doing here is basically telnetting to a server on, on port 80. What we'll see here. Can we dim the lights there? Uh, can we dim the lights? I do not know. I make the font bigger. Um, I cannot make the font bigger. I can maybe do the that. Videos aren't being yeah. recorded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's only on off, guys. Right, we're fine here. Right here. <laughs> Actually, maybe do the joke. All right. So <coughs> I'm not going to walk my fault this, this stage. So anyway, <laughs> in the example here, we're telling it to port A. Uh, what I'm doing here, I do a get request, as you see here, let me pause that real quick. And let's say I see here, get slash, all right, stop, <coughs> okay. I want to talk about those there, right? So get slash HTTP um, slash 1.0, right? So this is a 1.0 request, okay? Um, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna, what you can see here is we're making the request, right? Hit enter to send the request off and I get my content back. Now notice immediately how my connection was closed off, okay? Um, so it's very simple, right? It's an example of making a get, doing a get request. Uh, real quick here, I do, want, I do want to highlight one more step back here. What's kind of nice is that if you, you can actually copy and paste from this quote unquote video. Uh, it's called ASCII Cinema, it's kind of nice. Anyway, breaking down right here also. So this right here would be your actual request. So that slash there, I'm requesting you know, just kind of the document route. Uh, by getting requests index.html, index.php, uh, CSS file, and image, just about anything, right? That's kind of where that portion goes, it's part of that URL. Okay, and we'll just let it run through again, just for the sake of running the demo twice. Not very long, I said. Awesome. Cool. We have another demo, right? So, uh, a head request. So, a get request pull, uh, asks for information from a server and gets the resulting payload from that server. It gets the resulting document or image or CSS or content, essentially. A head request <laughs> essentially asks for just the response you would get from the server, but not the actual content. Uh, this is good for checking to see if a server is redirecting you or if a server uh, is having an error. You just want to get back the response code. So we'll see here. Uh, in this case here, what you're going to find, what you're going to highlight, what I'm going to highlight here is this will be HTTP.1.1 .1 request. And we'll see here how the connection isn't immediately closed. It's actually kept open for us. And as I mentioned earlier, that difference, that persistent connection, right? So we'll see, we'll see here. All right, so tell that, right? Support.io, port 80. So instead of get, we had the first time, I'm going to do a head request. We see here, I'm just going to pause real quick. We see here, the right. What I'm seeing here is I'm doing a different type of request, head request. Same, uh, same resource, right, just slash, uh, which server translates to index.html, uh, kind of by default, and then it's HTTP 1.1. I also mentioned that one of the requirements of HTTP 1.1 was that it needed a host header, okay? Um, and essentially all that is is telling the server, of all the sites you have on this server, I want this one back, right? This is the one I want back. We'll notice here that I make that request. I don't get the content back. All I get back is a response from the server saying it's okay, it looks good. But also notice how that connection has been kept open. It wasn't immediately closed, right? So again, that's part of that, that improvement from 1.0 to 1.1. <coughs> All right. And then, let's see here. One more example. Let me turn the lights back on. All right, options. So an options, re options request to a server. Uh, some servers can disable this. Uh, some servers don't like you having this out there. So we'll say nothing. Uh, but it's a way to say, hey, what kind of requests can I make to this server? Okay, so let's talk about that. Let's look at it here. Again, we're doing a, a request for 1.1. .1. We'll see that here. How the connection is also kept open for that. So, 
I'm just using Telnet as one tool. I'll talk later on in, the, in a few more slides about other tools we can use to kind of make this a bit more streamlined, okay? Or how we can also, also sort of analyze other requests. Okay. Like, you know, for host setup, there's a requirement for every request from there. And we see down here that we have our options are to do a head request or a get request, right? Cool. Both of which we saw examples of earlier on. All right, we can do lights now on if we so choose, or we keep them off. Um, all right, cool. people fall asleep even more than they already would. Um, all right, so yeah, I've been to conferences too. Other methods. Uh, all right, other methods here. Mm, actually, let me. After lunch, two is the other one. The first one, first one for lunch, and the last one are the hard ones. Oh. All right, so other methods, put and post. So to this point, we've talked about methods to get information from a server, right? Uh, get information from, or get information, or get, sorry, get content from a server, or get information from the server um, by the response code, or about what we can ask of it. Uh, these two methods are about sending information to the server. Give the server information that it can process and, and deal with. So two here, put and post. Uh, both of them are, are fairly similar. Both of them send information to a server. Um, with like for example, index.php or application.php, and that, that resulting page is expected to be able to, to process that data, right? So um, the first one here, a put request, right? Uh, the main difference between the two is in the way that data is submitted. With a put request, information is submitted via the URI, or the URI. As we see here in a key value pair, we have um, you know, domain.com, index.php, <coughs> And then I have a query string uh, sending in, we have, like you see here, a key value pair, uh, user, first name, last name, and then we have uh, Johnny Record, right? As kind of those values. Uh, and you would see this as part of the string in your browser, information gets into the server. Uh, the next one would be a post request. Again, very similar, but instead of it being in the URI, it is part of the actual request body, okay? Very simple. Uh, I didn't get to do demos of these, so I don't have them. Maybe in a future version, we'll have that up there. So, uh, really good thing about the slides being online and kind of in a web page format. <coughs> as, I do get those, as I do get those demos up and running, I'll put them up here. You can find them later on. Right. Um, so, these are kind of, kind of a living presentation. We continue to update it um, every so often. So. Yeah, okay, cool. So, those were all of the, the methods, right, or the requests, the, the verbs, right, the actions we can do for the server. So, about something else here. Talk about the headers. Uh, we've already seen one header, right? We've already seen uh, the host header, right? So there's a lot of different out there. Click on that link to Wikipedia, get a ton of different uh, headers out there. Um, but essentially, what headers are? Let's see here. I there we go. I have slides out of order a little bit. Um, the, essentially, a header describes additional information about the client and the server, right? So we have headers on both sides. <coughs> headers from the client and headers from the server. Okay. So, uh, a few of them, let's see here. Awesome. The first one we saw here is a host header. We saw that in the example, right? That's how I defined from my one box wonder of the hundreds of sites that it has, which one I want back, right? Um, it defines that host name, so that's how, that's how Apache knows, hey, give me domain.com, not domain.org, right? For example, that word. <coughs> um, let me step back, these are, these are headers from the client to the server, right? These are, these are headers that more often than not, your browser is sending off for you, right? Um, so first one's host, second one would be user agent, right? This is information about your, your browser, your OS, things like that, uh, that gets into the server as well. Uh, if you're curious about what yours is, you can click on the link there and uh, bring up right, what information your browser is sending off about you, so. All right, next one, accept. Uh, this tells the server what types of content that I can accept back from the browser, from the browser itself. Whoa. Okay. That was weird. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this, tells, this, tells, this, this is a client saying, hey, when you send information back, I, I prefer it in this format versus that format, right? Or I prefer it in this language versus that language, if it's set up to do that. Um, now, so all those were, those, all those were headers from the client to the server. Let's talk about from the server the client, okay? And we'll do a demo where you can see all of these coming back and forth. 
uh, part of the tools section will demo some of those things, right? To kind of get some, some reference point around it. All right, so the first one they send off, they send off is the server header, right? Uh, the server identifying itself as, as what server and version it is. Um, this is useful, this is absolutely very useful. Uh, many times we get a ticket or alert at work, and all we get back is a load balancer, right? Which has have a ton of sites on it. And we're not sure if that site's hosted on the Windows side <coughs> or the Linux side, okay? Uh, we can do a request to the server, get back that information. If it says IIS, not our problem, right? You can off the Windows team. If it says Apache, okay, maybe our problem, right? Maybe not. Uh, Nginx, probably our problem. Uh, we had a case one time where a customer was complaining the site was not working, should not just work. It was, he says, my site's on this server, it's not working. I'll hop on the server and start looking at it, right? Well, we make changes, nothing, nothing happens. Make changes again, nothing happens. Eventually, like, we'll just look at the request errors, right? Because we can look at the browser itself, not at you know, the actual content going back, or not, not the, the protocol itself. So we finally said, okay, hey, Teletech, go ahead and just do a request through your, through your command line, do a curl, do a whatever, and get permission back. Well, it came back and it said Apache. That's good, okay, fine. Only problem was, I'm oh, sorry, that was right, we reversed that. It, was, it came back and said Nginx. Like, okay, that's probably our server. Look our server on. It's running Apache, not Nginx at all. He had moved the site to another server and told no one. So here we are, sitting troubleshooting the server, um, because he was trying to upgrade all his stuff, get new technology, uh, but he never told us that, right? So, a simple thing, right, but can be helpful to find out, make sure you're working on the right server first of all. Um, save you time, save you time. You time, not me time, I already been right? Um, so yeah, it's just a little story there. Uh, cache control, right? This, this tells the, the server, this is the server telling the client, hey, if you can, go ahead and keep this around for a little bit, right? Uh, maybe this is a CSS file, right? A file that's in chain very often, a JavaScript file. Uh, maybe it's a jQuery framework that you get from Google that you just downloaded, right? Because many sites do the same framework. Go ahead and keep this around. Don't download it again if you don't have to, right? So that's what this, this, this server is telling us. You just set in the server uh, for things like images or JavaScript or files, again, that just don't change very often, right? Uh, let's see here. Content code, right? Um, this is the server telling the client, what I'm sending you has been encoded through gzip or deflate or any other encoding type, right? And lastly as well, uh, the content type. What I'm sending you is going to be this type, right? Now, let's see. Now, another one? Ah, other headers. That's right. I forgot about these. Uh, so other headers, right? So some headers are non-standard. We see these most often when we talk about a proxy in front of multiple web heads, okay? In our environment, this would, that proxy would be a load balancer. Load balancer is attaching, uh, injecting a header into every request, saying X forwarded for, X forwarded host, and then an IP address, right? The original IP address. Again, this is for, like I said, it, it's going to be where you have uh, a load balancer or some sort of proxy in front of a number of web heads, right? Because you want to know where the original request came from, not the request for your load balancer, right? Your proxy. Um, used for ads, tracking, knowing where customers come from, right? All those things are useful to know, at least if you're a business online. 